I'm gonna avoid being close to nightclubs. Uh, this is this is a funny story about my man, my man Phil Hawksworth. He was living next to, and it's just up this way, next to the Seaman Pub, okay, which is a gay nightclub that was open past curfew. Like clubs are supposed to close at at 12 a.m. in Chiang Mai. He was he was he was living close to them in a nice apartment called the Prestige, but they were just pounding house music till like three o'clock every night, and he was losing his mind. Because uh, he didn't do his homework on that, and a lot of people don't do their homework on it. You move into a nice place downtown, and you get there for the first Friday night, and sound travels from a, a noisy club, and, and now that's what you're putting up with. Um, this is something that I did do, but down that way uh, towards Neman are a couple clubs, and I was like, those clubs are far enough away from me that's not going to be a problem. For the most part, that's true. But they are a problem when they are holding house music festivals, which they do every fucking month because there's a hundred holidays here every month. And they hold these giant festivals with like fucking mind numbing house. And that you can hear through, Nemon is sort of the nice area, you can hear that through like almost the entire Nemon area of just blasting that house music. And it'll be like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, just, just banging the doors down. On, on that loud house music. So I'd done the research, but I wasn't far enough away. Next time I know that like, you know, even being this close, I'm, I'm pretty far away, it's not gonna be close enough. You know, if, there, if it's gonna be a place where they have lots of festivals and stuff like that. So again, I take total responsibility for, for all this stuff. Uh, but be, avoid being close to nightclubs. Number eight, avoid uh, living around construction or potential construction like the plague. Um, if a building's being built de next door, avoid it like the plague. Also avoid areas where it looks like condos are going to be developed. Like if you're in a new condo building and there's a bunch of empty land around you and in the city that's building, they're going to build condos right next to you for the rest of your life. And your view's going to suffer. You're going to hear bang and jackhammering all day. It's going to be a mess. Uh, I thought I'd done that. If you look down, you see all these, you know, sort of, little row houses here. I thought those were gonna be there for a while. I was wrong, okay? Just just over there was uh, a, a nice little house of someone's and uh, they tore it down and for the last six or eight months they'd been building um, that building with like no safety standards at all. I mean, like, it's insane to watch and uh, it's, just, it's just every day, every day noise from there. Okay, um, another reason why I'm moving. I, that one I thought I'd done, right? I thought I had that handled, but I didn't have that handled. Um, you know, again, sometimes things surprise you, but, or, or, or things you couldn't plan for. But again, when you keep minimalist and you're staying in a furnished place, you can move. Also here in Asia, you can do three months, six months, one year leases. You can do shorter leases um, so that if things like that happen, uh, then you can move. So like ideally you do like a, a, a shortest lease possible and then you like the place, the, the neighbors aren't noisy, then you extend that lease, okay? Um, number nine, avoid a place facing into the courtyard of the building. Let's say there's like two buildings that you're living in, like, or, or your condo building is like, you know, two or three buildings facing each other. Avoid having the view facing that courtyard, okay? If there's a courtyard and it's relatively small between building to building, you gotta avoid that view. Because your view is going to be people, other people on their balconies, and they'll be able to see an entirely to your place. I went to visit my buddy Ryan in Pattaya, and he he was living in a really nice place. Um, but dude, like we we're walking, we're sitting out on his balcony, and out comes some like these fat Russian tourist guys, and they're just ass naked smoking cigarettes, and everyone's out on their balcony, and, like they're not very far away. Okay, and like so, like you have no privacy in that kind of scenario. Also, when it's facing like the inner courtyard and there's grass and stuff, you're gonna hear that guy trimming the hedges all day, which is fucking annoying, okay? Street noise is just annoying. I mean, you can hear that shit. There's like 17 dips, different types of noise here. Um, I mean, thank God I have, I have my uh, my head, my earmuffs, okay? Those those earmuffs, dude, those 3M Optine earmuffs that, that I, I, I listed for you guys in that video, they should be handed to you when you come off the plane in Asia because they don't have the same idea of noise pollution um, and, and that type of thing as, as we do. So 
That's number nine. Number ten, live in a big building to pres preserve your anonymity. This isn't a very particularly tall building, and I'm always seeing the security guards and the staff and, like, everywhere. They see my comings and goings. They see if I'm bringing a girl back. I mean, it's too much, okay? It's, it's very annoying. If you're living in that big 30-story high-rise, okay, they're going to have a rotating staff of people. You're not going to see the same people every day. They'll have money to have, you know, lots of different people. Um, there's going to be so many people in the building, they're not going to, you know, you know, everyone's not going to recognize you and know who you are. You're not going to have to say hi to people all the time. Um, you're going to have more space and you're going to be able to preserve your anonymity. And, you know, if you're bringing girls back like, like, like you should be, um, you know, you're not going to have people like looking at you and security guards, you know, who are, who, who are, who are looking at you for, for, for what you're doing, um, which which does happen a little bit in Asia, uh, it might not it shouldn't happen too much in the West, but you know you, you want to be able to be private. You want to you know be able to come in and out. Um, I mean that's one of the selling features of living in a house is that privacy and not and not having to um, share it with other people. But also like the downsides of the house are you're farther away from the city center. You know you don't have people to do everything for you. Um, for now, the condo is just easier for me, but uh, you know, maybe a house in the future. Number eleven, live in a place with central air. Okay, if you look to my right here, you've got these. Those are the backs of the, you know, giant ugly air conditioners that are inside that you'll find in in places like Asia. Big old LG beast of an air conditioner. Um, it's ugly. It's noisy. You have to clean it every three months or you start to get sick. Uh, you know, the transistor breaks down because you're running it all the time. Central air is cleaner, it's quieter. The building will clean it for you. You barely hear it. Um, plus, it's handled by the building. You don't have to call a tech to get it. And um, you're, I think your, your, your energy bill will be lower. Definitely central air, not those big, big, ugly air conditioners is, is a key. Number 12, live on a floor with keycard only access. Keycard only access to the building and to your floor is a really good thing for safety. So people can only get in with like a key card or a fingerprint and then they can only get up to your floor. They can only go to their own specific floor. Um, so this is really good for safety. Plus if you have a security guard there, that's even safer. Also, it just means like less noise, less people are coming in and going, less people are having conversations in the hallway. Um, like even, you know, in a big building, it's those floors are going to get cleaned less. So you're going to, you know, you're not going to hear the cleaning staff every day, you know, uh, going through the floor and, and, and all that stuff. And, and, you know, people coming in and out, um, having that floor, that high floor, not in a nice building with key card access is a really nice, um, really nice thing, which will be where I'm going next, probably in Bangkok, by the way, boys, I think I'm, I've had my fill of Chiang Mai here. Number 13, and this is, this is not always possible, but it's ideal, get a view facing the water. Okay, by far the nicest view is facing the bay or lake, even if it's man-made. Again, I was in Pattaya, as I said before, and my buddy Rise Airbnb, I think on the you know, 25th or 30th floor, looking out over the lake, um, you know, the sun's coming down, and it's just gorgeous. Like, I didn't realize how, how much of a difference having that kind of a view makes, how much more peaceful it is. Again, it's not always ideal, but if it's or not always possible financially, uh, at least in the West, a lot more possible out here. Um, so nice. Also, the, the, the big selling point is uh, one, zero chance of street noise because you're high up and uh, the water is not going to be welding at 10 o'clock at night like, like this fucking guy over here. Number two, um, zero chance of development or construction, right? Can't build on a lake. Can't build another condo building that's going to, you know, destroy, destroy you with noise pollution for the next three years and fuck up your view when you're on a lake. So if you are going to settle into like a condo for a long term, um, I think one that face, if, if you can get it facing the water, man, that's the way to go. Uh, if I go to Pattaya... I'll probably do that in Bangkok. I won't have the option, most likely, but um, I might go to Pattaya to stay there with my, you know, hang out with my buddy Rai, and I'll definitely be getting something that's facing the water. He's on the water right now, and he's sending me pictures, and I'm, I'm jealous. So um, 
water facing view, if you can, is is the ideal. That's the one where you're like, okay, I can stay here for three or four years and I'm going to be golden. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I had a reader of mine on another uh, video talk about downsizing. Like, dude, I get it. If your money's not there, uh, not all these things are going to be possible. But but remember, it's a big wide world out there. You can if you can get your money on, on, online, you can geo arbitrage that income and live anywhere. If you have to downsize, downsize for now, um, but downsize in a place that's at least safe and clean and doesn't have noisy neighbors. If you know, really do your homework on that and um, use this stuff as like sort of like if you're not there yet as, as an added incentive of like, okay, man, this is, this is where I know where to work towards. This is, where, this is the place that I'm going to be living in.